Welcome to CoreLogic's update on the housing market for April 2018. Our focus this month is to review the performance of the housing market over the first quarter of the year and examine the factors which are influencing market conditions. Australian dwelling values held firm in March, with the combined capitals continuing a softening trend, recording a 0.2% fall, while regional markets saw a 0.4% rise in values over the month. Over the first quarter of the year, capital city dwelling values were down by almost 1%, compared with a 1.1% lift in regional dwelling values. The combined regional markets have been outperforming the capital cities since October last year, with the strongest annual growth rates being recorded in the regions adjacent to Melbourne, Sydney and Canberra. Victoria's Geelong recorded the highest capital gains, with dwelling values up 10% over the past 12 months, followed by the Southern Highlands and Shoalhaven region in New South Wales, with a rise of 9.5%. The capital region of New South Wales, which includes Queanbeyan, recorded a rise of 8.3%, as did the Newcastle and Lake Macquarie region. It seems that buyer demand has rippled away from the capitals, where growth in home values has been the strongest, towards areas where housing is more affordable, but also areas where jobs, amenity and transport options are also reasonably plentiful. Across the capital cities, cities continue to show the largest month-on-month -month declines, with dwelling values down by 0.3% in March to be 3.9% lower since peaking in July last year. Melbourne's down 0.2% and Adelaide is down 0.3%. They were the only other capital cities to see dwelling values fall over the month. At the other end of the spectrum is Hobart, where dwelling values were 1.7% higher over the month. Darwin recorded its first month-on-month -month rise in almost a year, up 1%, while subtle rises were also recorded across Brisbane, Perth and the Canberra market. Across the combined capital city valuation segments, it's clear that value falls have been most substantial across the premium end of the housing market. Analyzing CoreLogic indices data across deciles shows the only valuation-based segment of the marketplace to record an annual fall over the past 12 months has been the most expensive 10% of properties, where values are now down 3.8%. Further to this, over the March quarter, value declines were mostly recorded across the most expensive half of the market, while the most affordable end of the market continued to record a subtle rise in values. Another noticeable trend is that unit values are now outperforming house values, a trend that was reversed during the growth phase. The stronger performance is subtle at the combined capitals level, with capital city house values down 1% over the March quarter, while unit values were down a more moderate 0.7%. More significant differences between houses and units can be seen in Sydney and Melbourne, where housing affordability pressures are more evident relative to other capital cities. Sydney unit values are up by 1.9% over the past 12 months, while house values are down by 3.8%. Similarly, in Melbourne, unit values are 6.6% higher over the past 12 months, while house values are up by just 4.9%. The stronger performance from the unit sector may suggest that buyer demand is becoming more concentrated in the medium to high density sector, where entry prices are lower and commuting times are often more convenient when compared with the similarly priced detached housing markets around the outer fringes of the city. Outside of Sydney and Melbourne, where affordability constraints aren't as pressing, it's the detached housing sector that's showing stronger conditions. Melbourne's housing market recorded its fourth consecutive month-on-month -month decline with dwelling values down 0.2%. To date, the decline in dwelling values has been modest. Since peaking in November last year, Melbourne dwelling values are down by only 0.7%. The weakness is emanating from the detached housing sector, where values have fallen by 1% since peaking, while unit values remain at record highs across Melbourne. The resilience of the unit sector may come as a surprise to some, considering the large number of newly constructed off-the-plan units around Melbourne's inner city. While high-rise investment stock is worthy of some caution, the broader Melbourne unit market appears to be resilient to value falls so far. Based on the most recent trends in the housing market, all signs currently point to a reasonably soft landing in Sydney and Melbourne after dwelling values surged 75% and 59% higher respectively during the growth cycle. Since peaking last year, Sydney dwelling values have reduced by only 3.9% and Melbourne values are down by less than 1%. Although dwelling values are still trending lower, led by Sydney, the rate of decline has noticeably eased over the past two months. Anecdotally, this improving trend may be attributable to a subtle relaxation in credit policies for investment and interest-only lending, as well as ongoing strong population growth and an increase in first home buyer activity. 
Lenders have overachieved APRA's macro potential guidelines with an annual credit growth for investment purposes tracking at just 2.8% per annum, well below the limit of 10%. Additionally, lending on interest only terms comprised only 15.2% of mortgage originations in December. That's tracking at roughly half the APRA limit of 30%. Considering lenders are well within these targets, we may start to see more evidence of interest rate premiums for investment loans being wound back. Data from the RBA to the end of March shows the average mortgage rate on three-year fixed rate investment loans fell by five basis points over the month to 4.4%. Despite the sluggish annual growth rate for investment credit, monthly aggregated credit data to February showed the fastest month-on-month -month increase in investment lending since May last year providing another hint that investment activity may be showing a subtle bounce back as lenders look to regain some market share. The latest population data points to another reason why housing market conditions remain buoyant. The national population hasn't grown this fast since 2013. Overseas migration is trending higher, which creates additional demand for housing. The vast majority of overseas migrants arrive in New South Wales and Victoria. However, the trend in net overseas migration is tracking higher across most states. Another factor that may be supporting housing market conditions is the surge in first home buyer numbers, particularly in New South Wales and Victoria, where stamp duty concessions have been available since July last year. In New South Wales, prior to the concessions, first-time buyers were just 8.8% of the owner-occupier market and the proportion has risen to a recent high of 14.3% in December last year. Despite the potential improvement in credit availability, credit policy is likely to be firmly under the spotlight following the Banking Royal Commission. Considering housing affordability remains a significant barrier in the largest housing markets and rental yields are close to record lows, even if the housing market is close to finding a flaw, the prospects for a rebound in capital gains, like what we saw back in late 2016 and early 2017, are far less likely. As always, you can find more detailed information on the housing market on the research pages of the CoreLogic website at www.corelogic.com.au.